please welcome Ted Alexandro. Thank you. Thank you, Columbus. How are you tonight? Fantastic. Uh, I have been a comedian for 23 years. Uh, Jim and I toured all summer. Uh, we did 37 shows in 39 days and uh, culminating here in Columbus. And uh, as a comedian, sometimes people ask me if I am funny in real life. <laughs> I explain to them that I'm really alive right now. But I get what they mean out there in everyday life when we're all equals. And I think I am. I think I am. But sometimes it misses the mark. Like I was at the coffee shop in my neighborhood. I ordered a latte. The barista punched my card, handed it back to me and said, you're halfway there. So I looked at him and said, living on a prayer. <laughs> Not my best work, but it was quick. When I tell you nothing registered on this kid's face, just the deadest eyes I'd ever encountered, I was like, dude, that's the funniest thing that's gonna happen at your shitty job all day. You might want to lower the bar. <laughs> We're trying our best on this side of the counter. I do drink a lot of coffee and wine. Yeah. At this point, I feel like coffee and wine are like my life coaches. Coffee's there for a pat on the ass, like, go get them, we can do this. And then wine's like, you'll get them tomorrow. <laughs> you gave it a good shot. Keep your chin up. I'm like, thanks, wine. You're the only one who gets me. <laughs> Touring around, a lot of driving, and uh, I, I do find myself listening to classical radio in the car for some reason. I'm not a huge classical fan, but there is something like hypnotic about the classical DJs. They have these very soothing voices, and they'll take very long pauses after the song ends, almost like they're afraid to speak. It's like, bum, 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 bum. Bottom. <laughs> that was Beethoven's sonata in G flat major. It's like, why you gotta be so creepy about it? Just play the next song. Make me feel so dirty. And they always tell you the key signature. It's always part of the title for some reason. It's like, oh. <laughs> that was Rachmaninoff's Moonlight Sonata in E flat minor. <laughs> it's like, we're not trying to play along at home. Like, Ah, uh, E-flat minor. <laughs> I was so close. <laughs> An excellent choice, Ludwig. <laughs> Comedian for 23 years, the first five of which I was an elementary school music teacher in New York City. Thank you. Thanks, you guys are way more excited about it than I ever was. I taught the recorder. I don't know if you're familiar with Satan's Little Flute. <laughs> this music in hell, I assure you, it is played on the recorder by third, fourth, and fifth graders. Hot Cross Buns, you remember that classic? Who could forget? It was like our free bird. We would end every concert with Hot Cross Buns. Send him home happy. Five years of my life. That was hot cross buns in 
G major. <laughs> Maybe that's why they asked me to leave. <laughs> then you'd be like, all right, kids, let's turn the page to three blind mice. <laughs> do, 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 do. Same song, like 50 times in a row. Different titles. Nobody ever caught on. And I only taught them three notes the whole year. That was my job. Three notes. I taught them B, A, and G. One time, this little boy came running up to me all excited. He was like, Mr. Alexandro, this is a C. I was like, shut the hell up. <laughs> Never mention that again. Ain't no C in the buns. I don't want to increase my workload by 33%. And the little kids, like kindergarten, first grade, they haven't really grasped the gender-specific terms yet because most of their teachers at that age are female. So I was always Mrs. Alexandro to them. <laughs> and at first you try to correct them. You're like, no, no, it's Mr. Alexandro because I'm a man. Then after a few weeks you give up, you're like, it's Miss Alexandro <laughs> because I'm not married yet. <laughs> Just meet him halfway. So I'm a straight man attracted to females, but there are certain guys who make me nervous. You know what I mean? Like every now and then I'm just like, oh, hello. <laughs> I never know when it's gonna happen or why. Like there's this guy that works in the bagel shop in my neighborhood, and he's just got the most mysterious blue eyes. I can't even make direct eye contact with him. Like as the line moves up, it's like I hope I get him, but I also don't hope I get him. <laughs> Like my heart is beating faster, my mouth is dry. <laughs> Finally, I get up to the front, I'm just like, cream cheese, you decide. <laughs> I don't know what it is, I'm not sexually attracted to him, but I just want him to like me. <laughs> Gay people have their own flag, of course, the rainbow flag. Nobody ever burns that flag, though. That wouldn't be much of a protest to see a flaming gay flag. It's more of a show of support, really. <laughs> I don't like the term sexual preference. I don't think that's accurate language. I don't think it's a preference. Like, I prefer direct flights. But if there's a layover, I'll still take the flight. <laughs> if I book a flight to vagina, and there's a layover in man's ass. <laughs> I'm canceling the trip. <laughs> guys, I'm Ted Alexandro. Thank you so much. You guys are fantastic.